This one's got extra padding, just like Jake. Hey, hi. Hey, focus, will ya? Hey, Jake. Damn it! Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Hm. Take five. Go on. What, John? What's so important? Why are you coaching that guy? Oh, that's right. You don't know. Sonya asked me to run the gym. Well, at least the fun part. As soon as Bobby yells back on his feet, I'll turn him into a champ. I'll make him crush stone. Just you wait. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Is it the first time you coached anyone? Yeah, but uh, you think I can't do this, don't you? Well, screw you. We'll win that fight. Have you noticed anything strange about Sonya? I don't know. Yesterday she said she hated the gym. But it also seemed like she wanted to save the place. Do you get any of this? I sure don't. It might not have seemed that way, but she loved her dad. Believe me. I've got reasons to be certain. Could you tell me where Old Erie's headquarters are? Uh, what for? No, no, no. You could get me into trouble. No way. You lied to me yesterday. And being the good friend that I am, I kept your secret. You owe me. I don't think I'd keep protecting you if we weren't friends. Although, if we were friends, you wouldn't hesitate to help me. Tell me, Jake, are we friends or not? Damned cat. All right. O'Leary's hideout is in the basement of a Chinese restaurant. But I don't even know how to get in. Well, I'll see you tonight. Wait, were we supposed to meet? Of course. Your place, 11 p.m. See you there. Ronald, the break's over. After 30 hours of work and several beatings, every bone in my body ached for a bed. Now it's my turn. So I went home to recharge. <clears throat> because the night ahead was bound to be promising. What do you know about that basement? Well, let me think. Nothing? Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. Strain that little boxer brain. You must know something. I've come to get O'Leary several times, but they always make me wait in the dining room. 
One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let them know I was here. A few minutes later, O'Leary came out the back door. That red one there. All right, you stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. Got it? Screw you. A promising night indeed. A bit too high to climb, if the basement I'm looking for were in that building. What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? Check out that graffiti. You're in On Leon Tong territory. Wow, I thought the Tong Wars had ended years ago. Maybe someone nostalgic just got bored. Damn Chinese mafias. Yeah, American mafias are infinitely better, no doubt. Are you done? What do you think? Okay, I'm going back to the alley. I'll let you know if I need anything. What's taking you so long? You want to switch places? Okay, I'm going back to the alley. I'll let you know if I need anything. Could it be an elevator shaft? How does this thing open? No. The plan will only work if O'Leary doesn't know I've been here. Haha! <laughs> Stupid cat! Stupid cat. I'm 
guessing it lights up when they ring at the main door. <laughs> oh, stupid duck! <laughs> Does he need a shotgun to <laughs> deal with rabbit. suppliers? <laughs> oh, stupid duck! Maybe it leads to the basement. Would he even notice if I got in? <laughs> oh, stupid duck! <laughs> stupid rabbit! Or maybe this is the way to the basement and not that corner. <laughs> oh, stupid duck! <laughs> Something tells me he'd notice me no matter stupid how rabbit. stealthy I was. <laughs> <laughs> stupid cat! If only I could reach that box. What? There's a trap door on the ground, right by the restaurant. Does that sound familiar? Huh? The, the restaurant or the trap door? Okay. Forget it. I've seen two possible ways to access the basement, but... You really think I can help you with that? There's a guy watching TV inside the restaurant. A red panda, I think. Doesn't ring a bell. I don't recall any panda waiters. I need you to go to the front door and ring the bell. All right, is there a bar in that alley? Have you been drinking? Count to 30, ring the bell, then run for the car. Got it? Whoa, you better send a bunch of Natalias my way after this. So, now what are you gonna do? I'll open the door with my lockpicks. Once I'm in... I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right. not your standard model. I had to give it my all.
Why do they have so many paper notes? Do they get that many orders? some frozen bodies. Hmm. It won't budge. Looks like those colorful notes weren't restaurant orders after all. Hmm. There's one on each table. Except this one. The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Yale is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. you could place so many bets on a single baseball game. Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. Sixteen days until the fight. 
Huh. Looks like those colorful notes weren't restaurant orders after all. A little thingamajig that adds on its own. What'll they think of next? It looks like a summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute. Did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? Ireland? I'd say that's Ireland too. A crossler? The good news is I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. Ireland, of course. This guy's obsessed. I hope I never become the object of O'Leary's obsession. Limited edition copy two of three. We listen if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? Thank you. 
Painting concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information, ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend? The incorruptible police commissioner? To be honest, if Smirnov had anything to hide, I'd rather not know about it. Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war which he came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. Bobby Yale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by knockout. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career. Strange as it may seem, the reports revealed that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society.
Luckily or not, files N through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. The report on Yale's father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why? Cassidy's report was possibly the longest among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, the rivalry went way back. So much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager's union. Dunn's integrity was legendary, even in O'Leary's shady reports, just like Yale had said. Dunn had kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym when he found him snooping around. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't possibly be the exception. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about $20,000 in a drawer. Jake. Someone was coming. Are we or are we not exemplary workers, Jim? Here it is, middle of the night. And we're working extra hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Hey, Jimmy, what do you think about that? I think he's scared stiff, Desmond. <laughs> Why's that, Jimmy? We're giving you the red carpet treatment. We even let you in the boss's office. You're one lucky fellow. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah, yeah, uh, very well. Uh, why are you... Shh. C calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, 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 three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. And tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? <laughs> no, please, please, please. I didn't do anything, I swear. O'Leary, the police have surrounded you. <laughs> You don't need to worry about that. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. Yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah, yeah, uh, very well. Uh, why are you... Shh! C calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, 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 three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. <laughs> I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. Then tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? <laughs> no, please, please, please. I didn't do anything, I swear. He was a good guy. <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? <laughs> he was my cousin. I. That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job and you needed the money. And I, I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh, you know what? I talked to her just yesterday. She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? She's lying. Why would I do that? Leave him alone, O'Leary. No one deserves to die. Not uh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you do. <sighs> he was a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? <laughs> he was my cousin. I... That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job and you needed the money. And I... I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh... You know what? I talked to her just yesterday. She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? <laughs> She's lying. Why would I do that? What about the kid? <laughs> Are you so sure you know how long a kid can hold his breath? With his little head inside a toilet bowl? 
<laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I didn't want to. It was his idea. <laughs> Selfishly, I was glad I hadn't risked my life to save Jimmy. Maybe not even someone like him deserves to die. But one could also argue that I didn't deserve to die for someone like him. Who's your boss? Give me a name! Cassidy. It was his idea. He said you'd hired me if I'd managed to scare the widow, and I just... All right, all right. Let's just... Calm down now. It's gonna be okay. There are two sacred principles that rule my life. The first principle is the love for my family. I do anything to protect them. The second principle, I never put my future in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I would even add a third principle. Or, better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two crucial principles, I take matters into my own hands. You see where this is going? For the first time, I got someone killed. Even though all I really did was rat him out. No, I, no, 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 I just... Stop I, interrupting I, me, Jimmy! No. It's not polite! Sorry. They're all the same. So rude! You know what? Let's leave it at that. You're going to give a message to that disgusting walrus Cassidy, aren't you? Yeah, 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 sure. Whatever you say. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Good boy. What? 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 what, what what's the message? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. You still don't get it, do you? You are the message. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Come on. Wrap him up. Make sure Cassidy gets the message for breakfast, will you? I hope he chokes on it. Got it. Where are you hiding, little fishy? Once again, you didn't get to hear the end of my story. Just where do you think you're going, putty cats? <laughs> Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is... The love I feel for my family. The second... 
I always, always play, play it safe. It. You think you're funny, don't you, Black Sad? Two sacred principles rule my life. The, the love, love you feel I for your feel family. for. What is going on today? Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is... The love I feel for my family. The second... Never leave destiny in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I'd even add a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything, if anything threatens either of these two prin- I take matters into my own hands. The first time that someone died because of me, even though all I did was rat him out, well, that guy ended up in the Hudson River, right off Pier 27. He's got to be even wetter than that fish by now. <laughs> you should have seen his face. It's but interesting what comes to mind when you think you're about to die. Suddenly all I could think about was how much I wanted a pet fish. You too, Bruno? Anyway, I was 14 years old, and I still dream about it. But his widow and his son. By then... I was adamant about buying a fish. But, but first... That was that. Never again. Nowadays, whether it's me who pulls the trigger or not, I have zero regrets. What's more, I sort of enjoy it. When a mob boss declares his love of family, it can only mean that, A, he won't hesitate to ruin yours, and B, he's cheating on his wife. In case anyone had any doubts about who's the boss around here, I'll put my dirty feet on his luxurious table to prove that all of this is mine. His pupils are dilated, and there's a slight grin on his face. The bastard is enjoying himself. The guy never hesitates to pull the trigger. Even if I hadn't seen what he did to Jimmy, I'd know he's not bluffing. I knew I had it in me to get out of that place alive.
No. O'Leary's wife is having an affair with Colbert? Should I serve this to O'Leary on a silver platter? Or threaten Colbert so he'll get me out of this mess? And, well, that's it, I think. <laughs> you know, Black Sad, I never made it this far. Congratulations, you're going in style. I didn't want to interrupt you because I respect you and your word. Colbert told me to come here. What? Me? No way! You 